Outrageous and unjustifiable, another attack on a United Nations school in Gaza brought swift condemnation from senior UN officials. The shell fell on the school overnight and killed sleeping children. These were Palestinians evacuated from their homes who were given shelter in the school. For me, this is a moment where you really have to say enough is enough and where you have to uh, search for the right words to convince those who have the power to stop this. An initial investigation points to the Israeli Defense Forces. The UN says it told Israel repeatedly that the school was being used as a shelter. The people who were in this school were there because they had received instructions from the Israeli def Defense Forces to leave the areas that they lived in and therefore they were sheltered in that premise uh, hoping and expecting there to be safe and protected and the fact that they weren't is unacceptable. Calls for a humanitarian ceasefire have been reiterated. The UN also condemned the firing of rockets and building of tunnels into Israel. As the death toll mounts to well over 1,200, the majority of victims are Palestinian. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and United States Secretary of State John Kerry announced that the United Nations representative in Jerusalem, Special Coordinator Robert Seri, has received assurances that all parties have agreed to an unconditional humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. This humanitarian ceasefire will commence at 8 a.m. local time on Friday, August 1st, 2014. It will last for a period of 72 hours unless extended. The humanitarian ceasefire was breached a few hours after it went into effect. In Iraq, as fighting continues with the group known as Islamic State, so does the influx of people fleeing the conflict. UN agencies are working to reach some 300,000 Iraqis, by official count, who are seeking shelter in the Kurdistan region. The Security Council is calling radical militants a major threat to Iraq's future. The Council is worried that illicit sales of oil in the region are fueling the fighting. During one of the meetings this week, the Council unanimously condemned any indirect or direct trade in oil from Syria and Iraq involving terrorist groups. In West Africa, the president of Sierra Leone declared a public health emergency over Ebola. The deadly outbreak has killed more than 700 people in the region. It began in Guinea, a country which had never before experienced the virus that was first identified in 1976. There are reasons to be worried, but the UN World Health Organization says transmissions only happen with direct bodily fluids. So the risk of infection, for example, for people when flying is low, so long as people don't touch someone showing active symptoms. Margaret Chan, the head of WHO, is traveling to the affected area to step up the international response. And people around the world this week celebrated Eid marking the end of the holy month of Ramadan. We leave you with these pictures from Mogadishu of Somali families celebrating after prayers. These images would have been unimaginable two years ago when the area was threatened by Al-Shabaab militants.